Hey guys, Wayne here from Tech Made Easy. Today I want to go over the Samsung Galaxy Tab S2 for beginners. This is going to be just a basic beginner's walkthrough. If this is your first time using this tablet or even an Android tablet, I'm going to basically just break it down, show you how to use this tablet and just kind of get you going. So let's jump right in. We always like to start with the buttons. So on the side here, you will have uh, your power button, your power slash standby button. And here you'll have volume up and volume down. And at the bottom, you'll have your home button slash your fingerprint scanner. So once you set this up, just take your finger, put it right there, and that will help you unlock the tablet. We also have to the left here, we have our recent apps button. So every time you open the app and close it, you can just tap here and it'll show you all the current apps that are running. And we'll go over this a little bit more once the tablet's on. This is your back button. So if you ever open something, and select something, you just tap this and it always takes you back one step. Also, if you're in an app and you're selecting things, it helps you again, just take one step backwards. So that's basically what that does. Um, nothing at the top here. You do have a headphone jack at the bottom right here and you will charge it using a micro USB cable. And we have our speakers at the bottom right here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and tap that. To turn it on, um, we do have a fingerprint setup as well as a, uh, a passcode. And we'll take you to the settings later on in the video and show you how to do that, how to basically set that up. Basically just hit that button and you swipe. That's how you basically get to the password screen. Um, or if you have a fingerprint already set up, again, you just take your finger, put it on there, and it will automatically unlock the tablet where you have to tap it first, turn on the screen, and then press the button and it'll unlock for you like that. So you've got a couple of different ways to unlock it. And again, we'll, at the very end, we'll go over uh, how to set up the fingerprint scanner and where you do that. So we're in the tablet here. This is gonna be your home screen. And um, this here is gonna be your app drawer. And so basically every time you download an app or a program, uh, on the tablet, it will show up uh, in this little menu right here. This is where you find every single app that is on the tablet. For those of you that are not familiar with apps, an app is just like a program is to a computer. So tablets and smartphones, they just call programs apps, which is short for applications. So whenever you download one, you will it'll show up in this section. You might have gone to the store, downloaded a game, and said, where's my game? Go to apps, swipe all the way to the last page, and that's where you'll see all the new things you've downloaded. Now you're probably saying to yourself, where do I download games or apps or anything? There's two places you can go. So there's what's called the Play Store, which is the Google Play Store. And in here you can download everything from games to productivity apps like Microsoft Excel or Word or PowerPoint. Uh, social media apps, Photoshop, things like that. And obviously they're broken down into categories and top apps and errors choice. So you can kind of go through here and just kind of explore to see the different options that are available. There's over 1 million plus apps that you can download. So, you know, there's the app. Uh, at the top, there's a little tab. So they're separated by games, apps. You can download movies and TV shows. You can download books and you can download music. So you just use these tabs to kind of maneuver the different categories and figure out what you want to download. Let's say you want to download something basic like uh, Solitaire. You would just, where it says Google Play, just tap there and you would type in Solitaire with the keyboard or you can just hit the microphone. Solitaire. You can just say it, it'll automatically search it for you. So that'll kind of cut down some of your time. And you can just select one of the options you see. You can see sometimes like little screenshots from the apps. You can see if it looks like it's a fun game. You can see reviews, what people are saying about it. If you don't like how it looks, just use that back button. Go back one. It'll take you to the last page. You can go through this list. and You can see the other options that are available until you find one you like. Let's say you say, I like this one. This one looks cool. You would tap on install and it will begin to download to your tablet. So as soon as that bar gets all the way across, 
that means it has been downloaded. And then now your install button changes to an open button and you can open the app right from here and check it out. Or if you don't want to see it on that screen, let's go back home. Maybe you close it and say, I want to play it later. Later comes, you want to play it. Where will we go? We go to apps and you will see your solitaire game in your app section. And so the apps are, are separated in order by alphabetical order. So solitaire is in the S section and there's our app. We just download it right there. Now I want to make one more important note. So if an app is free or a game is free, when you tap on it, it's just going to say install. However, everything in here is not free. Some things are paid for. So if you see something that's not free, like some of these will also, it'll say it right on the front that it's paid for. Let me find something that's not free just for the sake of showing you guys. Usually there's like a bunch of paid apps that just pop right up and now nothing's coming up. Okay, I'm just gonna do a search for something I know that's not free. So this particular game right here. So one, in the list, it shows you a price. So that's the first way you know it's not free. And if I tap on the game, instead of the button saying install, it shows the price. So you would have to tap on it and then you'd have to put a credit card in there in order to buy it. So just wanna just prepare you for that, that everything isn't free and some things are paid and you have to decide what you wanna buy and don't buy. So. Anyway, that's where you would go to download applications, books, games, things like that. There is another place you can go, which is the, the Samsung Galaxy App Store. And in here you'll find uh, also a ton of apps and also exclusive content from Samsung. So they give you a lot of stuff for free. Um, they have partnerships with a lot of apps and they have like maybe a customized version of a certain app for you to use. Uh, where you'll get you know extra things that the normal Play Store wouldn't give you. So I encourage you to go through here. You'll find a lot of other really cool things that you know you may want to uh, try out as well. So that's how you download things onto the tablet. Now I'm gonna just take a step back here and go over a few more of just how to navigate the tablet itself. So um, at the top here, if you swipe down, this is called the notification panel, and basically. When you set up your email on the tablet or you download Instagram or Facebook and someone sends you a message, they'll always sort of give you a notification that someone has communicated with you or is that something new has updated in this section. So here there's all kinds of things. There's an update on like new emails, the weather. Uh, these are deals from different apps that I use, uh, all kind of stuff. So, Again, when you open up your tablet, if you ever see something pop up that says, oh, Facebook sent you a message, you would swipe down and you would see the message here. And then you could tap on the message and it would take you from here right into the app that uh, sent you the message. And then you'll obviously have the full information. So that's kind of how that works. What you also have in this section are what are called uh, shortcut switches. And these are shortcuts to different settings on the tablet so for example your wi-fi if you wanted to connect to uh, your your wi-fi at home you would just swipe down to this section and you hold down on this little icon and it'll take you right to the settings and right to the wi-fi section where you could then find your network and you'll basically you would just tap on it and it would ask you to type in the password to the Wi-Fi network and then it would connect you to that network. So it's just that easy uh, to connect your tablet to Wi-Fi or any, anything else. So that's just one option. Now also, this is GPS, this is the volume. So if you wanted to turn the volume down, if you're in a setting where you don't want it to make noise, if it's blue, it means that it's gonna make noise. And if it's basically has a slash over the speaker, it means that it won't make any noise. That's just kind of how that works. You have your Bluetooth. If you want to connect to a Bluetooth speaker or headphones, same thing, just put your finger on it and just hold, and it'll take you right to the settings. You would have to turn on Bluetooth, and then look for your Bluetooth device in this section, 
connect to it and then you could use Bluetooth headphone speaker or any other Bluetooth device with the tablet. Um, you have your power saving mode. This is if your battery's low, you can just simply tap on that and you can put it in a power save and it'll stretch the battery longer. Airplane mode, all that stuff. Now what you can also do is you can swipe down further. So remember there's one swipe to get the initial notification panel and then you can swipe again to get some other options as well. Do not disturb. Smart view, which allows you to mirror your screen to a, a TV. Maybe you have a video on here and you want to show on the TV, you would do it with smart view. You can swipe to your left and there's one more option there. So these are just shortcuts to the most important settings on your tablet. And you can just access them anytime by just swiping down. You also have a really cool new option. This wasn't here when I first got it, but it's a, it's a search. You can basically search your tablet for anything. So I can just tap here. I can search for uh, an app. I can search for something that's in my email. Maybe someone sent me an email about Chinese food and I want to find it. I can just type in Chinese food and it'll look for that email. Anything on your tablet, you can search it just by going to that section at the very top. So again, swiping down and then pull down again. And that's where your tablet search is right at the top right there. Now also, there's another cool setting at the top here. If you tap on this little uh, yellow circle, this is the user section. So you can actually change the tablet. So the user would be all the information under your email address and under you, but maybe you wanted to let a family member use the tablet. Maybe you wanted to let one of your kids use it. Um, you could set up a, a user for that child or for that other family member that would just have their information so that they couldn't mess with or see any of your personal emails or pictures. It would just be all of their information and you could separate the different users um, simply with um, with uh, a pin. So each each user could have their own like section of the tablet and it would be separated by a password. So this is great if you plan on sharing the tablet with a, again a child or a spouse or, or the other option is the guest mode, a friend comes over and says, hey, can I use your tablet to search the internet? No problem. You can tap guest. It will take the tablet out of the section with your information and put them in a generic section where it would not show any of your personal information and they wouldn't have access to anything, but they could still you know, use the web, watch videos or sign into their own accounts and it wouldn't interfere with any of your stuff. So that is the, the guest mode. So really important feature, obviously, these tablets always tend to get used by someone else. And so um, the, you know, keeping your information safe and secure and out of other people's hands is what you want to do, right? The last thing we're going to show you is what we alluded to at the beginning of the video, which is how to set up the fingerprint scanner. So we would go to the settings. Now my settings is down here, but yours may not be down here. So swipe down from the top in the upper right corner, click on the little wheel. And we're gonna go down to lock screen and security. And then from here, we're gonna go down to fingerprints. And since I already have a password set up on the tablet, um, I have to draw it. So let me go ahead and draw that. So yeah, I want you guys to see it, no offense. Okay, so this is the fingerprint section. And basically you would just tap add fingerprint and you would take your finger and you would put it over the sensor a bunch of times. It'll read it. And after that, you'll be registered. Now, what it will also ask you to do is to set up a secondary form of security in the event the fingerprint scanner ever gets damaged or doesn't work. There is a backup option to unlock the tablet. So you can make that, for example, um, a pattern lock, which is that you have to draw something to unlock the tablet, or you can make it uh, a pin so it can be uh, a numeric password or it can be a full out typed password. So you would go up to here under screen lock type and to draw it again. Okay, and these are the different options you have. So pattern, pin, or a high security password which is uh, numbers and letters. So. You'll have to select one of those options if you do set up a fingerprint to unlock the tablet because it's always going to be just a secondary option. 
So, in short, this has been our Samsung Galaxy Tab S2 for beginners. Um, we tried to hit all the important things, so the buttons, you know, how the apps work. In fact, let me show you one more thing. Don't want to close this out too soon. So, I sort of explained what these do, but I want to just show you in detail. We actually sort of went over the back button, but I'll show you anyway. So, um, every time you open one of these little apps, let's say I opened up Google Chrome. I open this up, and then I want to go back to my home screen. All you do is tap the home button. That's how that works. It's super easy. No matter what app you're in, if you want to go back to this main screen, just hit this button. It takes you back. Super easy. Our recent apps, this is always going to show you what apps are open. So every time you open an app and you hit the home button, the app doesn't close. It just runs in the background. So you can always go back to it later. So I might have opened Chrome and looked at this page and then I went back home. And I want to go back to that. I can just simply tap on recent apps and then I can just tap on it and go back just like that. Or I can tap on recent apps and say, I want to go back to that Bluetooth setting. I want to finish setting up my Bluetooth speaker. So that's simply what this button does. It just shows you everything that's open and allows you to jump between old, older things you're working on. And if you're saying, hey, I'm finished, I'm not using the Play Store anymore, you can just swipe to get rid of it or there's a little X in the upper right corner, you can click there and that'll also close it out as well. And our back button, we, we, sh we sort of showed this, but I'm gonna show you one more time. So let's say I go into settings and I go to tablet visibility. If I wanna go one step back, I just hit the back button. It always takes you back one step. So if I tap device maintenance and I go to battery, I can just hit this once, take me back one step, I can hit it again take me back to settings if I hit it again if I keep going it'll take me out of the app so that's kind of what that button does so didn't want to close this out without being very thorough I know a lot of people are using this for the first time and so I just wanted to make sure that we set you up for success so hope you guys did find this helpful make sure you like favorite and share if it was helpful hit that subscribe button make sure you also check out our other site we have a, uh, another YouTube site called h2 tech videos where we have a ton of great content on there as well so subscribe there as well and thanks again for watching leave us a comment down below if you did find the video helpful we always love to hear your feedback take care thanks for watching have a good one